Hey guys, Spiro here with Movie Briefs, dissecting all the movies that you haven't seen. That way, you can fool your friends in thinking that you've actually seen the movie. On today's episode, we are going to be dissecting the cult classic, Tommy Wiseau's The Room. The Room is often said to be the Citizen Kane of bad movies. And for those of you who don't know what Citizen Kane is, it's often described as one of the top three movies of all time. So we open up with beautiful scenery of San Francisco. Yeah, pretty awesome. The movie starts after the credits with Johnny walking into the room, weird right, to his soon to be wife Lisa. Johnny surprises Lisa with beautiful red dress. Lisa comments if she could try it on and Johnny just replies, sure it's yours. Enter Denny, the local neighborhood boy who just walks in unannounced. Oh hi Denny. Lisa and Johnny want to go upstairs for some fun time and Denny asks if he can join. They politely decline and go upstairs, giggling like school kids. They jump in a bed and they start pillow fighting playfully. Denny all of a sudden just decides to join them, and he jumps right in the bed, staring at them like he's about to skin them alive. Look at that face. Doesn't that face scream that I have some sort of skin suit in my closet somewhere? I just like to watch you guys. Oh, Denny, Denny, Denny boy. <laughs> and Denny makes his way off. Then, the sex scene starts. We're only about six minutes into the movie, and they're already getting freaky to some R&B music. Make sure you watch this scene carefully, because there's a lot of continuity errors, like sometimes they're dressed, sometimes they're undressed, sometimes Lisa's hair is up, and sometimes Lisa's hair is down. Again, this is introducing you to this world that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Cue us to the next morning, and Johnny wakes up to his lovely wife, and we get full butt shot. Yup. So after Johnny leaves for work, Lisa's mom comes over. And they start to have a conversation on the couch, just like girls do. Lisa then confesses to her mom that she doesn't love Johnny anymore, because he's boring. Lisa's mom promptly says that she can't leave Johnny. Well, you've known him for over five years. You're engaged. You said you loved him. He supports you. He provides for you. And darling, you can't support yourself. Lisa then all of a sudden says she's busy, and that her mom must leave. And she does. Lisa then promptly calls Mark, a dreamy brown-haired bearded man who is just sitting in his car, not moving at all. After a little bit of coaxing here and there, Mark agrees to come on over. All right, see ya. Mark comes over and reveals that he is Johnny's best friend. The drama. Lisa then seduces him with some candles, some music, and a sexy dress. I mean, the candles, the music, the sexy dress, I mean, What's going on here? And then 10 minutes into the movie, we're quickly into sex scene number two. Oh my God, Johnny bought you a house and supports you. How could you do this to him with your best friend? Mark feels the same exact way. After making love to his best friend's soon to be wife, he responds with, why did you do this to me? Because you know, he didn't want anything to do with it. Lisa seduced him with those candles, that music, and that sexy dress. Then they have a long conversation about how Mark is Johnny's best friend, and Lisa is Johnny's future wife, even though we've established that already 10 minutes into the movie. Johnny's my best friend. I can't hurt Johnny. I know. He's your best friend. After their discussion about Johnny, they agree that they should never, ever do this again because it'll hurt Johnny. And then they seal it with a kiss because, you know, Johnny's feelings. You ever wonder where Johnny gets his flowers from? Me neither. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, hi, doggy. We cut back to the house with Lisa, and she's ordering what can only be described as probably the most disgusting pizza order ever made. Half Canadian bacon with pineapple, half artichoke with pesto and light on the cheese. Gross! After Lisa's done ordering the pizza, our friendly neighborhood man-child comes through again, Denny. And what's he here for? Can I kiss you? She says no, and he leaves. Yup, 
Johnny comes home right when Denny leaves with some flowers. Remember, we saw him buy those earlier. Lisa asks if Johnny got his promotion today at work, and he responds with a, huh. Johnny then goes into how he saved the bank bundles and how they tricked him and how he doesn't care anymore. Lisa responds with a, I still love you. And Johnny responds with a, you're the only one who does. Man, right in the feels. Lisa then promptly responds with a, you're right. The computer industry is just too competitive. What do you do? They already put my ideas into practice. The bank saves money and they are using me. You're right. The computer business is too competitive. What do you do, Johnny? We want to know. Tell us what you do. Lisa says she knows what will make him feel better. A nice drink. I don't drink, you know that. But she decides to pour him some scotch and vodka anyway. If you love me, you'll drink this. <laughs> You're right, it tastes good. <laughs> Cut to Johnny and Lisa drunk. They're giggling. Lisa's got Johnny's tie on her head. They're having a dandy old time. I'm tired. I'm wasted. I love you, darling. <laughs> Come on, make love to me. And I know what you guys are thinking. Whoa. This movie already has three sex scenes in it and we're only 20 minutes in? Well, technically there's only two sex scenes because this one's just a repeat of the first, just with different music and some of the shots edited in different sequence. So, joke's on you. Cut to a scene of Lisa and her mother on the couch discussing Johnny's surprise birthday party. Lisa's really not that into planning it anymore because guess what? She doesn't love John anymore. Shocker. Lisa's mom decides to drop a bombshell on Lisa, saying, Nobody wants to help me, and I'm dying. You're not dying, Mom. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Lisa then decides to make up a phony baloney story about Johnny saying that they got drunk the other night, and he hit her. Lisa's mother completely ignores her claim, saying, Hey, Johnny's a good guy. He takes care of you. You know, like any caring mother would. Two strangers walk into Johnny's house, completely unannounced, and they're looking for trouble. Or are they? They just start kissing and making out on the couch and getting undressed. There's not a lot going on on the scene, but I have two things to say. Arms up. Arms up. And best BJ face ever. Once they're done hooking up and getting dressed, Lisa and her mom walk in, revealing that they're Lisa and Johnny's friends Mike and Michelle. They quickly leave, and Lisa and her mom start talking about, guess what, how Lisa doesn't love Johnny anymore. Mike quickly rushes in and starts digging through the couches for something, and he tries to put it in his pocket, but Lisa's mom snatches it away and reveals that it's actually his underwear. We then cut to the rooftop where Denny is just bouncing a basketball, innocently playing like a child when the character known as Chris R. walks through the door, and he looks mean. He walks up to Denny and asks, where's my money? Denny says it'll be here in five minutes, but Chris R. has no patience for this tomfoolery. He pulls a gun out and puts it to Denny's head and puts him against the ground and says, where's my money, Denny? Did you lose my money? Is this gonna be the end of Denny? Is Denny gonna get shot by this thug Chris R.? Nope. Johnny and Mark come up and they tackle Chris R. and a fight ensues. Lisa and her mom all of a sudden appear also on the rooftop, and they are screaming in concern. Lisa and her mom start interrogating Denny, asking why this man with a gun is trying to kill Denny. Denny reveals that he owes them money for drugs. When asked where the drugs went, Denny says he doesn't have them anymore. It doesn't matter. It matters a great deal. After the heated exchange between Denny, Lisa, and her mom, Johnny and Mark rush back to console them all and the drug problem is never brought up ever again. Now it's time for probably the most infamous scene of the room. Johnny, clearly upset, storms up on the rooftop, screaming at the top of his lungs. I did not hit her, it's not true, it's bullshit, I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi Mark. Oh, hey Johnny, what's up? He sits down next to Mark and they start having a conversation about women. Johnny says, Mark, you should find yourself a good girl. And Mark hints, well, maybe I already have one. I think we all know who he's talking about here. You have some secrets? Forget it. Why don't you Why? talk? Why? Forget on. it, dude. Is it some secret? No, Tell me. forget it. I'll talk to you later. Well, whatever. 
But don't worry, Johnny's not going to be alone for long once Mark leaves because Denny's going to come up. You know, good old reliable Denny. They have a quick conversation and then they toss the football around. Denny then confesses to Johnny that he is in love with Lisa because who isn't? He says that he often fantasizes about her and her red dress and thinks about kissing her quite often. You think Johnny would be upset about this? Nah. Johnny goes ahead and gives him cryptic love advice, ending with Denny thanking him for paying for his college tuition. Denny, don't worry about that. Lisa loves you too, as a person, as a human being, as a friend. You know, people don't have to say it. They can feel it. Thanks for paying my tuition. You're very welcome, Danny. And keep in mind, if you have any problems, talk to me and I will help you. We cut to Lisa and Michelle sitting on the couch talking. Lisa tells Michelle that Johnny hit her and that she doesn't want to marry him anymore. Whoa! Michelle could care less and asks Lisa if she's sleeping with another man. Lisa admits that she's sleeping with Johnny's best friend, Mark. It's getting good now. Someone finally knows and is going to rat Lisa out. Don't worry. You can trust me. Your secret is safe with me. <laughs> Johnny, clearly knowing that there's a secret, asks and badgers them what the secret is. They don't tell him, and Michelle gets up to leave. Before she leaves, Michelle turns around and says, Lisa, remember what I told you. That's not obvious at all. Johnny then confronts her about the abuse allegations, where Lisa kind of just brushes this off. Johnny then begs and begs and begs Lisa for her to talk to him. You're part of my life. You are everything. I could not go on without you, Lisa. You are lying. I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa. Why are you so hysterical? Do you understand life? Do you? No, Johnny. You were such a good guy before this. Lisa just grabs her stuff and goes to bed. Don't worry about it. Everything will be all right. You drive me crazy. Did you guys forget what city we're in? We're in San Francisco. We cut to the next day and Johnny is walking around suns out guns out style in the alleyway. He meets up with the guy Mike who hooked up on his couch earlier. He then tells Johnny about how he and Michelle hooked up on the couch and when Lisa and her mom caught them that he rushed out and forgot something. I have misplaced. I uh, I've forgotten something. Mm -hmm. uh, my underwear. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I come back to get it, you know, uh, and I pretend that I need a book. You know, uh -huh, I'm like looking uh -huh. for my book. And then I, I reach in and put the underwear in my pocket and sort of slide out real quick. Uh -huh. Well, Claudette, she saw it sticking out uh -huh. of my pocket. So uh -huh. She pulls it out mm -hmm. and she's uh, showing everybody me underwears. Johnny responds with, that's life. Denny and Mark then join them in the alleyway and they start talking. And then they start tossing the football around with each other. It's a four-way football catch party. And they are literally two feet away from each other just tossing the good old pigskin. All of a sudden, for whatever reason, Mike falls into a trash can. And then has to get rushed to the hospital. And then the scene's over. Just like that. After that NFL-worthy game of football, we cut to Lisa and her mom in the house. And they are mad at Johnny. Apparently, Johnny didn't want to put a down payment on Lisa's mom's friend's house. What a jerk! Lisa then confesses to her mom that she is sleeping with another man. Lisa and her mom leave, and we cut to Johnny, who's sitting on the staircase. He's heard everything they just said, even Lisa's confession. Uh-oh, it's getting good now. How can they say this about me? I don't believe it. I show them. I record everything. He then hurries and gets a cassette player and a tape and connects it to the answering machine on the phone. Because apparently, recording everything means only phone conversation. We then cut to Johnny talking with his friend Peter, who may or may not be a psychologist. But you are a psychologist. Peter, you always play psychologist with us. Johnny tells Peter that he knows Lisa is unfaithful to him. When Peter questions it, Johnny casually responds with, Oh, I overheard her earlier. The doorbell rings, and guess who it is? It's that cheater, Mark. Mark walks in and asks Johnny and Peter what they're talking about, and Johnny says, we're just talking about women. Johnny and Mark then decide to mock Peter, calling him a chicken, and then Johnny does what we can only describe as his best chicken impression. Cheep, 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 cheep. Who are you calling a chicken? Lisa then enters the room, and Denny's following close behind her. Mark decides to get up and leave because 
Hey, that's awkward. On the way out, Mark and Lisa have an intimate exchange. Doesn't seem like that romance is going anywhere anytime soon. Once Mark leaves, Denny decides to sit on the floor and look out the window. And Lisa joins him. Denny then tells Lisa that he's concerned about his friend Johnny. Because Lisa and Johnny's wedding is only a month away and Johnny seems really upset. Lisa dismisses these claims and kicks Denny out. Cut to Peter walking on the roof and seeing his good buddy Mark smoking marijuana. Why is Mark smoking marijuana? It's good, bro. Peter then confronts Mark, saying that he knows that Lisa and Mark have been having an affair. Psychologist, more like psychic if you ask me. Mark just flips out and grabs Peter and hangs him over the roof. Uh-oh, looks like Peter should have just shut his mouth. Suddenly, Mark decides to pull him back over and says, Sorry. After his apology, Mark starts freaking out and kicking the chairs and tables that are on the roof and admits that Peter found out his secret. He is sleeping with Lisa. Peter, seemingly being the only voice of reason in this entire movie, says, Hey Mark, you probably shouldn't see Lisa anymore, and you definitely shouldn't sleep with her. We then cut to everybody all dressed up in tuxedos. Seems like it's going to be Johnny's wedding day. Everybody walks in one by one, and Mark is the last one to join them. And he's shaved. Ooh! Baby face Mark. You look great. You look like a baby face, huh? Denny suggests that they should all go out and toss the football around. But Peter, being the Debbie Downer he is, says, In these tuxedos, are you crazy? Denny then asks him, What are you, Peter? A chicken? And then, yes, everybody in the room decides to mock him like a chicken. <laughs> there was nobody in this entire movie and this entire scene that said, Hey, Tommy, chickens don't make those noises. They go buck, 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 or buck. They don't go cheap, 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 cheap. That's not what chickens sound like. Okay? We then go to the alleyway where they start tossing the football around in their tuxedos. What a snazzy way to dress up for the game. Peter then trips and falls while trying to go for a catch. Denny then rushes up to Peter on the ground and looks at him in a very creepy, creepy way and says, Gee, Peter, you're clumsy. I mean, we never see Denny's room or apartment or anything like that in this movie, but I'm pretty sure he has some dead bodies in there. Cut to Johnny and Mark in a coffee shop. They're having a coffee and some Danish just like friends normally do. Mark asks how everything's going at the bank with Johnny. Oh, pretty good. We got a new client at the bank. We'll make a lot of money. What client? I cannot tell you. It's confidential. Oh, come on. Why not? No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? Boy, only if Johnny knew what Mark's sex life was really like. We then cut to Lisa leading Mark up to her and Johnny's room. Mark says, what did you have to show me? And sure enough, Lisa shows him her boobies. Lisa and Mark then make love in Lisa and Johnny's bed. So not only has Mark climbed the metaphorical stairs, he's also climbed the literal stairs. Good for you, Mark. Hmm. It's been a while since we've been to San Francisco, hasn't it? Let's check in and see how it's doing. <music> Cut to Mark and Johnny at the park playing some pigskin. I like to personally think that the football represents Lisa. Just two friends tossing it back and forth. We then cut to Mark showing up to Lisa and Johnny's house. Lisa's cleaning, getting ready for Johnny's birthday party. Lisa then says the party's not going to start for a while, but she wants to show Mark her party dress and then takes off her shirt. Whoa! There's no dress under there! Just your boobies again! She then slams Mark on the couch and starts kissing him passionately. Then there's a knock on the door! Who could this be? Who's going to catch them? They both scramble to start getting dressed. Lisa puts her shirt on first and then invites the person to come in because the door's unlocked. We reveal Michelle walking in and she's caught both of them and she knows some tomfoolery was going around. Hi, Mark. XYZ. What are you talking about? <laughs> Examine your zipper. <laughs> you guys are too much. Mark, a little bit embarrassed and disheveled, decides to leave. Lisa then tells Michelle that she's not going to stay with Johnny anymore and she wants to leave him for Mark and that if Mark doesn't give her what she wants, she's going to find someone who will. Michelle's only response to this is... Your point of view is so different from mine. Just like any good friend should do. Not try to solve the problem, just continue to allow it. The scene then ends with Lisa and Michelle having a pillow fight on the couch. Yup. Stop it! <laughs> Are you trying to ruin my party? <laughs> hey guys. Let's go visit San Francisco. 
Johnny enters his house and it's all dark. He flips the light switch and everyone yells, surprise! It's Johnny's surprise birthday party. Party's going well. Everyone's having fun, talking, eating cake, drinking champagne. Lisa then announces, hey everybody, let's go outside and get some fresh air. Everybody thinks that's a pretty good idea and they all scramble out faster than a bunch of high schoolers that get busted with alcohol at a party. One by one, everyone shuffles out and Mark is the last in line. But Lisa slams the door in front of him. Now he's trapped in her love den. She drags him over to the couch and he says, I don't know if we should do this here. We're going to get caught. They're all outside. <laughs> what an evil genius you are, Lisa. Some random stranger that we've never seen before then barrels through the door and catches Lisa and Mark red-handed. This is going to be good. He confronts them and says, this isn't something you should be doing because you're going to hurt Johnny. Mark then gets up and gets super aggressive in his face and exclaims probably the greatest insult I've ever heard. You don't understand anything, man. Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. Yeah, we don't know who you are, character, so you keep them comments in your pocket. Johnny then walks in, blind as can be to what's going on in his own home, and exclaims, Thank you, honey. This is a beautiful party. You invited all my friends. Good thinking. The party's going well. There's nothing that can ruin this vibe, right? Wrong. Johnny walks up to the front of the party and makes an announcement. Hey everybody, I have an announcement to make. We're expecting. Everyone is super excited for Johnny and Lisa because they are two lovebirds. Lisa, on the other hand, she doesn't look so good. Michelle and the random stranger from earlier pull her aside and ask her, are you really pregnant? Whose baby is it? Johnny's? Mark's? Somebody else's that we don't know? Lisa then tells her friends that she made up the baby to make things interesting. Because this is just getting worse and worse. I feel like I'm sitting on an atomic bomb waiting for it to go off. Me too. Lisa then tells everybody that they should go back inside the house for the party. And everybody does. We then cut to inside the house with Mark confronting Lisa on who the baby daddy is. Lisa, visibly upset, pushes Mark away and says it's none of his business. Johnny then comes over and confronts the two because clearly some monkey business is going on. They start to push and shove, and as quickly as that fight starts, it ends. Right. Okay, folks, everything is fine. Fight this over, folks. I'm sorry, Mark. Yeah, me too. We then cut to later in the party, and Lisa and Mark are dirty dancing on the floor in front of everybody. I guess they don't care about the secret anymore. Johnny then confronts Lisa, asking what she's doing, because that's his future wife grinding up with his best friend in front of everybody. Mark then tells Johnny to leave her alone, and more pushing and shoving happens. The fight seems to calm down a little bit until Mark says, maybe if you could keep your girl satisfied, I wouldn't have to do it for you. This throws Johnny into a rage, and he takes off his jacket, and they start pushing and shoving, and everyone in the party comes to break it up. I kill you, you bastard. You could kill me if you tried. You betrayed me. You're not good. You, you're just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. Johnny, chill out. It's over. Trey, shut up. Cool it's, over. Over. it's over! It's not over! Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. We then cut to Johnny and Lisa's bedroom. Lisa's sitting by the bathroom door waiting because Johnny has barricaded himself in, very, very upset. Lisa then picks up the phone and calls her lover boy Mark, saying that she doesn't love Johnny anymore and she wants to come down and be with him. This whole time, Johnny is listening to the entire conversation, and once Lisa hangs up, Johnny storms out of the bathroom saying he's got something for her. I think we all know where this is going. Johnny rushes back into the room, holding the cassette tape filled with months and months of recorded conversation. He's about to bust her, even though he already knows what's going on. He puts the tape into the recorder while Lisa packs to go to Mark, and we hear the exact same conversation we just heard. Johnny pauses it halfway through and says, I treat you like a princess, and you stab me in the back. I love you, and I did anything for you to just please you, and now you betray me. How could you love it? We then listen to the rest of the conversation until Johnny can't take any more and grabs the cassette player and throws it against the wall. Lisa then leaves Johnny and Johnny goes to the stairwell and yells, Get out, get out, get out of my life! Johnny goes in a fit of rage, tearing apart his house, ripping dressers, knocking things off shelves. He picks up a tube TV, a tube TV over his head and throws it out the window. He continues to start ripping out the dressers and throwing her clothes all over the room. He comes across a special memory, the red dress from the beginning. And then Johnny decides to do something else with the dress. And I can only describe it like this. Oh. 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 You 
Trout. Yup. That just happened. Johnny's lost his best friend and his girl. He has nothing to live for anymore. So he takes a gun out of a chest and shoots himself in the face. We then cut to Johnny in a pool of his own blood lying there dead. Mark and Lisa come up because they heard all the commotion and they realize what they have done. Where Lisa seems a little bit upset, but she says, hey, at least now we can be together. You don't have me. You'll never have me. <laughs> I think he has short-term memory problems. Denny then rushes in, clearly upset because he sees his friend Johnny lying dead on the floor. Mark is so upset over the situation, he is done with Lisa and he tells her off in the best way he knows how. As far as I'm concerned, you can drop off the earth. It's a promise. Just leave! Both of you! They continue to weep over Johnny's dead body as ambulance sirens blare in the background and then we fade out. The end. And that's it for our movie brief on The Room. Did we miss anything out? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our channel, and hit that little bell so you're notified as soon as we upload a video on Thursdays. And make sure you don't watch the movie, watch movie briefs.